In this lab, we'll be learning some concepts and practical skills for measuring heart rate using palpation. So some of the things that we want to accomplish this today is to know why it's important to measure heart rate and have you guys demonstrate some proper techniques and procedures that we can use when measuring heart rate with palpation and also how to calculate heart rate after we've collected it from palpation. But let's start off first, I think, in a, a very generalistic terms, and let, let, let's talk about what heart rate actually is. I, I, I think we can have a pretty decent understanding that it's the number of heartbeats needed to supply the blood, uh, supply the body with blood, right? We often hear about resting heart rate. We often hear about maximal heart rates, but there's two other categories, and those being pre-exercise heart rates and submaximal heart rates. You probably already know that resting heart rate, that's the number of beats your heart takes to supply the body with blood while you're at rest. But it's important to know what rest is. It's not just simply sitting in a chair for five minutes. Resting is best defined as when you wake up after a night's sleep before engaging in any activity. And that includes even getting up to use the bathroom. It's certainly possible to take resting heart rates during the day, but many scholars suggest at least 20 minute rest period in a calm environment before doing so. Many of you may have experienced going to the doctor for a physical or a checkup and they take your heart rate. So do note that most likely this is not your true resting heart rate. On the other hand, we know it's important to measure one heart rate before engaging in an exercise program or before exercise testing. And the administrator, they're going to sit the client down and they'll measure heart rate and then record it. And it's good practice and while not truly resting, it's important screening process. We often call this pre-exercise heart rate. So make sure you understand the difference between this and resting heart rate. Submaximal heart rates can be taken at any time during steady state exercise at any intensity above rest and below maximal. Submaximal heart rates are very useful for health and fitness related responses to exercise. And then of course there are maximal heart rates which are taken at the highest possible workload on uh, a given modality, treadmill, bike, elliptical, whatever it is. And there seems to be a preconceived notion that higher maximal heart rates are better, just like higher maximal VO2s are better. But this is not necessarily true. For example, if two people of the same age, sex, and size have the same maximal workload, is it better to have a higher or a lower maximal heart rate? Well, I would think lower. This means the heart is beating less to maintain the same cardiac output at the same maximal workload. And don't forget, maximal heart rates generally decline with age and there's nothing we can do about that. In this lab, we're gonna focus on resting and pre-exercise heart rate. I'll use those terms interchangeably, although I want you to understand the distinction between the two. I'll be using them interchangeably, but as mentioned earlier, it's the number of beats needed to supply the blood to the body when you are at rest. And the unit of measure is in beats per minute. Let's not forget, whenever we're writing numbers down, we should always include those units of measure. You've already learned in your exercise physiology class that the amount of blood the heart pumps through the circulatory system in one minute is known as cardiac output as the product of heart rate and stroke volume. In the most basic terms, more fit individuals will have greater stroke volumes, thereby re requiring fewer beats to supply the body with blood. Again, the mechanisms by which this occurs should be too familiar to you from your ex -phys class. Well, why take resting heart rate? Hmm. Resting heart rates, it can give us an idea of how well the cardiac muscle is functioning and when used with indices like blood pressure and cholesterol and so forth can give us an idea of current health and possible health problems. Whereas a lower resting heart rate can mean a better physical fitness, elevated resting heart rates can mean greater risk of cardiovascular event. Normal resting heart rates generally fall between 60 and 100 beats per minute 
Anything over 100, possibly due to heart arrhythmia, stress, infection, excessive caffeine intake, or a worsening heart problem. Resting heart rates over 100 is known as tachycardia. And unfortunately are linked with greater risk of premature death, especially in men. Even elevated resting heart rates between ranges of eight, uh, 60 to 100, they can be a sign of risk. So for example, resting heart rate between 81 and 90 beats per minute have been reported that can result in double the chance of death. And some have reported that resting heart rates greater than 90 beats per minute, although not considered tachycardia, they can actually, that can actually be an indices of tripling the chance of death. So the idea is, is that while we consider 60 to 100 beats per minute as a normal range, in other words, it's not considered tachycardia, it's not considered bradycardia, which is lower heart rates, the higher the value within that range, then the more risk that one has of some type of cardiovascular event. Now, let's talk about bradycardia, right? So anything below 60. And, and what we find is that resting heart rates below 50 and those who are not active can also be a sign of cardiac problems. And these can be due to deteriorating electrical nodes in the cardiac muscle or improperly transmitting electrical signals. As a matter of fact, low resting heart rates associated with dizziness and or lightheadedness, that should be of concern. And let's not forget to medications. So medications can also affect resting heart rate, like beta blockers. So how, well, let's just point, we find more problems occur on the higher end, right? So how do we lower our resting heart rate, especially if it's approaching that 80 to 90 to 100 and so forth. How do we lower that bad boy? Well, things are pretty simple actually. Quitting smoking. So if one smokes, that's, that's going to be a big issue there. Controlling stress. Stress seems to have uh, some type of correlate with it. How about watching our caffeine intake yeah, and other stimulatory energy drinks and those kinds of things? Maybe adjusting medications. And guess what? How about regular activity and or exercise? They do well to adjust resting heart rate. Now when considering exercise, even small amounts can make a change, but higher intensities make a greater impact. So in other words, as one becomes accustomed to lower intensity exercise, increases in intensity will elicit greater responses. So what do we need to measure heart rate? When we're going to palpate, well, it takes no equipment. You don't need anything. Is simple multiplication is needed to calculate the beats per minute, so you really shouldn't need a calculator. But I guess that would be the only thing, really, if you if you had to have something. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the steps for measuring heart rate with palpation. First, we want to make sure that <clears throat> our client should be instructed to not eat or drink anything that might increase heart rate, especially things that are caffeinated or stimulatory. And generally what they suggest is at least within the hour is what we hear most scholars say. Patients should not have engaged in any kind of recent exercise or strenuous activity. So, you know, don't try to measure somebody's resting heart rate immediately after a workout. And generally what we hear scholars say is try not to measure it within one or two hours after something like that. You know, and have your clients sit down and rest for at least five minutes. And again, this is pre pre pre-exercise, right? Feet should be flat on the floor and should be in an upright, comfortable position. And if you're taking the radial pulse, the arm should be resting on a table or cradled in the hand of the administrator at heart level. So uh, radial, oh, we can also take it at carotid, either one. I'll explain both of those, but let's just talk about the radial first. Now, whenever you're measuring heart rate with palpation, you want to use the flat anterior distal phalanges of the first and second fingertips. Okay. So don't use the tips of the finger. You want to use the flat part of the finger. So think about it on the opposite side of the fingernail. What we're going to do is we're going to place that on the flat part of the medial lateral anterior wrist of the person we're measuring. 
In other words, just below the base of the thumb, we call that the radial side. And when we are doing the carotid, okay, you're going to use the same fingers, use the flat fing fingertips there, the flat part of the fingers, the opposite side of the fingernails, but we're going to place that on the windpipe, just below the jawbone. Now, when you're placing your fingers on the arteries, make sure that you press firmly but gently until you feel a pulse. If you press too hard, you're going to occlude the artery, and that's going to create problems. So you don't want to press too hard. Count for 15 seconds for pre-exercise or resting heart rates, and then basically you're going to take the number of beats that you counted in that 15 second period and multiply by four. And finally, the last little hint, when, when you're counting, try not to watch the clock continuously. You may be looking at your watch or something. Try not to look at that continuously. So note the starting point and then note when you'll have to end. So if, if, it, if mine says uh, 20 seconds, it's at the 20 second mark, then I'll know I'll need to finish at the 35 second mark, right? And so then what I do is just kind of look away and count the beats and then glance at the watch just to make sure I'm not hitting that 35 second mark. When I hit the 35 second mark, then that's when I'll stop counting. But this helps you concentrate on the beats of the pulse. All right, so what do we do after we take those measurements? Well, now we've got to calculate our beats per minute. All right, so what do we do? So let's say we counted 20 beats for 15 seconds, right? 15 seconds. Well, we know there are four 15-second periods in one minute. In other words, there's 15 seconds is a quarter of a minute. So if we count 20 beats in 15 seconds, well, we multiply by 4, right? So 20 times 4 equals 80 beats per minute. On the other hand, let's say you decide to count for 30 seconds. That's half a minute. So we have to multiply the number of beats, in this case, 25 beats by 2. So 25 beats by 2 equals 50 beats per minute. What if you counted for 10 seconds? Well, I wouldn't recommend this at rest or pre-exercise, but it's commonly used to take heart rates during exercise. So since 10 seconds is a sixth of a minute, in other words, there are six 10 second periods in one minute, I would multiply by six. So if I counted 11 beats in a 10 seconds, then 11 times six, 66 beats per minute. And finally, what if you counted, let's say 77 beats for 60 seconds? What would you do? Well, if you counted all of 60 seconds, which is one minute, you don't need to do anything. <laughs> but if you really want to, I guess you can go ahead and multiply by one, right? Have fun. All right, so let's go ahead and see a demonstration of taking heart rate with palpation. When your client comes in, the first thing that you want to do is ask them if they've engaged in any behaviors that might affect their resting heart rate, like eating, drinking, taking any medications, and so forth. Make sure your client's sitting upright, comfortably, with feet flat on the floor. And after a five minute rest, at least a five minutes rest, you can start taking heart rate. And it's best to always measure on the left side. Notice how her arm is resting. She's not supporting it in any way. When you take heart rate, make sure you use the flat part of your fingers, not the tips, just the flat part of your fingers. And you can use either the right or left, depending on which side you're taking the heart rate. If you are measuring at the carotid, place the flat part of your fingers just underneath the jawbone at the windpipe and find the pulse. It's okay to move around if you can't find it the first time. Again, you don't want to press too hard, just firmly enough to feel it. If measuring at the radial, just below the base of the thumb is where you're going to put your fingers. Flat part of your fingers go just right on the wrist on the radial side. Find the pulse, and it's okay to move your fingers around if you don't feel it the first time. But once you find it, note the time on the stopwatch. Don't forget, stop focusing on the watch and focus on the counts. Once you've reached the end of the time, 
then you're ready to take the number of beats, multiply it by the fraction of the minute. In this case, we measured 17 beats times 4 gives us 68 beats per minute. So what have we learned today? Well, we know why it's important to take heart rate. We talked a little bit about that. We understand the proper techniques and the procedures for measuring heart rate with palpation. Remember, I gave you all those steps. You saw those demonstrated. And you know how to calculate heart rate from palpation with the examples that I gave earlier. So now what you want to do is take a look at the videos that I've assigned to you. And as you go through those videos, pay attention. Find out where there might be any mistakes or improper techniques or procedures and note those.